Welcome back to Babby's House. I am so honored to introduce the author of Grains of Sand, Dr. Benson Karanja, uh, is a, a remarkable um, example of Philippians 4.13 that tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. Never in a million years should you ever say, I cannot do something. Man. Because the Bible says with God, all things, all things, not some things, not maybe, not might, not coulda, woulda, shoulda, mm -hmm. but all things mm -hmm. are possible through God. And Dr. Benson Karanja has an amazing story that is told in his beautiful book called Grains of Sand. Will you help me to welcome to Babby's house, Dr. Benson Karanja. My friend, it's good to have you on the show Thank today. You. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Here. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. Now, we'll listen to you speak, and you have an accent, but it's not a Georgia Southern accent. <laughs> It is, it is an Eastern accent, Eastern Africa, exactly. and you come from the beautiful country of Kenya. Yes, sir. Yes, so talk to us about growing up in Kenya and what brought you to the United States. Growing up in Kenya, I was just a, just a, a normal African boy uh, growing up in a farm that was owned for many years by the settlers from Europe. And uh, the one who owned the farm was a far cousin of the Queen of England, of the royal family. And my father was the head chef for them. Mm, so I wow. grew up just there like a regular boy. I did not wear shoes until when I was ready to go to high school. So it just, um, it was just a normal, uh, normal, normal life of a fr an African boy. And, uh, I went to school. I was the youngest in 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 my in my school, um, but the the most important thing that I still can remember is that the same farm that was owned by Elspeth Huxley, and Elspeth Huxley has written several books, and in two of them, uh, it's a story about my family. Mm. One one of Beautiful. it is my my Kenya or out in the middle day sun. The other one is is the Flames Trees of Thika, and it have TV series that I've shown many years in BBC. Mm, but we later on owned that farm. Yes. So we owned that, that, that farm, so we thank God for we that. We thank God for that. Yes. And so how did you make your way to the United States? I made my way because in 1987, early 1987, uh, the late, our late friend, uh, Elwood Ellis, had a dream, and the dream was, if he is able to bring uh, all black folks throughout the world uh, who are Christian, whether they are preachers, whether they are businessmen, professionals, and we all do business together, we'll be the 11th wealthiest nation mm. in the world. So he went around the world and was selecting people, inviting people to come to Atlanta for that conference of one week. And uh, I was very fortunate, very young at that time, uh, below 30, and my church uh, appointed me or asked me to come with a delegation that came to Atlanta. And that's how I came to Atlanta in 1987. I remember it was summer of 1987, and uh, when we came, we were at Hyatt Hotel of downtown Atlanta, and there were delegation from New Zealand, from England, everywhere. Yes. And uh, and uh, as we were talking during the break, you told me you came. You I was invited that to sing and, at that very same conference. Exactly, yeah. I was the musician and led worship and did wow. special music wow. that same week wow. at that very same conference. And, and Dr. Karanja, that that conference impacted your life mm -hmm. just like it impacted my life. That conference changed my world. Wow. Because prior to that, I had this vision that, that it was kind of a cockamamie vision mm -hmm. that all missionaries were white people. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love me. Yeah. Um, but that was just kind of the culture that exactly. I, I was raised in. Mm -hmm. You know, missionaries that were kind of local, mm -hmm. you know, in my town. They ministered to the sick, they visited the hospital. But I thought people that went to faraway countries were, were basically white, single women. Right. They went to faraway places and they were never seen or heard of again. Yeah. But then I went to Destiny 87, right. and for the first time in my life, I saw black people yes. who were mission minded. Exactly. And it planted a seed in my life yeah. that, and I'll never be the same. And so you came to that conference and you stayed here and began to, and you went, you went to uh, Beulah Heights Bible College. Right. I, 
I stayed, I stayed um, for one week um, and in my room, I was in my room. I was very successful in Kenya at that time. Um, I had everything that any business businessman would want. I had a farm, I had two cars. You know, having two cars in Africa at that time, that's not a small thing. I was a member of golf club, so I was okay. I was, this is life. And, uh, but in my hotel, there was a strong spirit that told me, you got to leave all that, mm. and you got to come to United States and go to a Bible college. Mm. And, Did and you grow I, up in a Christian family? Did you have a Christian background? My mother was a great Christian uh, for since when she was she was born, and I was a member of um, of, of my church and I was holding uh, some positions in in the church in my denomination. But I, I fought with that spirit of me coming back to 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 United States and going to a Bible college. Of I course, had, I'd already done courses. I'd already done uh, with. Uh, courses with the London School of Economics, and I didn't need to go to, I didn't feel that I was called to go, to become a pastor. I knew I was called to be a Christian businessman, but I didn't see myself being a pastor. Why would I go to a Bible, a Bible college? college? Yes. <laughs> and, but I was convinced, and uh, at that time I asked people about in Bible college here, and they told me about Bill Heights, and I went there and picked up the, uh, the application. I went home and I filled the application and I've said all that story in that little book. But my wife and my family, uh, I mean, my kids wanted to come to the United States, but my wife did not want to. Mm -hmm. And I had to fight that war until I was able to convince her that I'm going to, uh, to back to the United States and I'm going to be a student. Did they come at with Bill you? Height. Yes. They came with that you. Eventually, she agreed to come. Yes. And uh, my three little kids, and we wow. came to Bill Heights. We packed everything, sold my business, and we came. Wow. Sold yeah. everything and exactly. came to the United States exactly. to enter into Bill Heights Bible to College. Beulah Heights. You tell the story in your book called Grains of Sand yeah. of how you you were not only a student, you were a janitor. Exactly. There at the college, and you there must have been a remarkable work ethic and tell me does did that come from your culture did it come from your parents or or what, was it just the need that you had to work really hard in order to make your way through school talk to me a little all, bit about that work above, ethic all the above I, I had a need uh but also my business back in kenya was was uh i was a professional agriculturalist person i was doing farms for for, uh, for other small-scale farmers that will sell the fertilizer and all that. So I enjoyed that. However, you know, you can't compare that uh, uh, with being a janitor. But the only work that I could get at the college at that time, being an immigrant, was to be a janitor, and also I did the art. So I was the only chief janitor, and also I was also the person cutting the, uh, the, the grass, grass and picking <laughs> up the, the trash and mm. picking up the leaves. The thing that bothered me was during fall where I had to blow all the leaves and the, <laughs> the cones would fall again and I would cl <laughs> clean them again. There seemed to be no end to it. But there was something that I want to say. And again, I'm a Presbyterian and normally we never emphasize more on, on spirit. But there was something when I was flowing over the Atlantic Ocean, something came to me and I was never bitter no matter how low I went. Mm. It, it changed inside yes. me that no matter what I'm told to do, I knew it is not going to be permanent. Yes. And I knew this is not going to be the destiny. Yes. So whenever I got that job and, and, and I'm cleaning or I'm cutting the grass, I knew this was just a bridge. Yes, wow. And this bridge is taking me to somewhere. Yes. But where it was taking me, I didn't know. Hmm. So there was never a plan that I'm going to be the president or I'm going to be professor, I'm not going to, no, no, no. I just went to school and I did my job with joy and uh, whatever I was told to do, I'll do it with, with, with joy, almost like I'm, I'm just serving my own thing. But and here, that's what happened. Here's the beautiful thing yeah. is that your gifts, your talent, 
your innate makeup, your dreams, your desires were coupled with God's plan. And God uh, opened doors yes. as you just take one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. And as time went on and as God would have it, you became the president right. of that very same university. And today you are president of the Beulah Heights Bible College in Atlanta, Georgia. And talk to me about the, um, you know, the responsibility of, of, in, of imparting, you know, that same uh, passion that you have to the students and to the faculty and the right. staff that you work with now. You see, everything that God prepares you to do, there is always the time to go through the boot camp. Mm -hmm. You got to go through those steps. You, you can't, many people think that you're going to jump and become the president. You're going to jump and be, you got to go different steps. So not only was I a janitor, I also worked in the library. I also worked in the financial aid. And I also went to work for the student services in the admissions office. Then I ended up being the executive vice president. Then at the end, I became president. That's powerful. Therefore, all those stations I was being, ex God was preparing me yes. to be uh, what I'm doing right now. Well, we're going to hear more of your beautiful story. I'm talking today with Dr. Benson Karanja, the author of Grains of Sand. Yeah. And after we take this break, Dr. Karanja, and you, our viewers, we're going to talk more with Dr. Benson Karanja, his amazing story of how God can take a seed of a dream and multiply it beyond our wildest dreams and imaginations. Stick around. We'll be right back after this. Thank you for coming back to Babby's house today. I am so happy to have as a guest Dr. Benson Karanja, and he is the president of the Beulah Heights Bible College in Atlanta, Georgia, and he is the author of Grains of Sand. And before we went to the break, Dr. Karanja, we were talking about the fact that, you know, the you didn't just mm -hmm. one day blow, were just one day blowing the leaves off the, the grass at the college and cleaning the bathroom, and then the next day you were president. Yeah. But there was a process, and it can be a long, arduous process. Yes. And sometimes during the process, we get discouraged right. because we don't always see the results of our hard work and our sweat equity. I can just imagine that there were seasons, and your book reveals right. that there were seasons of discouragement. Absolutely. Can you just share maybe a quick story about that? Yes, and through that journey, there were so many obstacles that would come. There were people who really were purely discriminating and openly showing me I don't belong there. Mm. Because until that time, by the way, Beulah Heights Bible College now is Beulah Heights University. Praise we, God. We, 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 are, we were able to expand the territory. Amen. But, but, but the point I'm trying to say, there were so many people. Up to 1980s, the majority of, of the student and the faculty and the staff at Beulah Heights were, were, were white, were Caucasian. Until 1970s, the, the, we were not accepting uh, people of color to be on height. Therefore, when I started working, I was the first, uh, I was the first person of color even to have an office. My and goodness. I remember it was, we were sharing office with somebody and the office manager, and I talk about that, who was there, could not even give me a comfortable seat. They, I didn't even have a telephone on my, on my desk. And to the president, one day he was passing, and he said, why are you sitting here? I said, well, this is for how long? And he went and get, got me a seat from his office and, and gave it to me. And he said, from now on, you sit. I told the office manager, I need another seat in my office by this afternoon. But the point I'm trying to bring here is that those obstacles are there. But sometimes, as you said earlier, in what Paul says, in the book of Philippians is that I can do all things through, uh, through the Christ who, who strengthens me. 
It is not because of our strength. It is not because we know how to do things. But when that spirit of God is in you and when God says this is your destiny, no matter what obstacles, whatever happened, God is going to see you through. Yes. And he's going to, and that was one of the things I said, I got to finish my education. And at that time I did my degree. I had gone to start, I had started doing MBA. So I knew after I finished this, there is a destiny that I yes. want to go. Yes. And I had that hope. As I, and I began by saying, there was change in me. No matter what I went through, there was always that spirit of humility. Yes. And Praise the God. spirit of saying, hey, this is just something that is not going to be permanent. I'm on my way to something. Yes. But that something, I never knew what it was. Yes. And that was what gave me hope. Yes. yes. And the beautiful thing is, is that God knows yes. what that something is. Absolutely. And God knows where that someplace is. Yes. And he's given you gifts. He's given you innate talents. And then, but what is so beautiful about your story, Dr. Karanja, and about all of our stories on the way to success is that there was a work ethic. Absolutely. There was a there was a tenacity, and sometimes you just have to encourage yourself, as the Apostle Paul said, or as uh, I believe it was uh, in the Old Testament, uh, David encouraged mm -hmm. himself in the Lord. Yeah. Some days you have to encourage yourself Absolutely. and never Absolutely. give up. Yeah. Can you tell us where we can get your book called Grains of Sand? You can get it from Amazon. If you go to Amazon, you can get that book. Also, you can call our office. Uh, and call my office and we'll send you one. Very good. Uh, but you asked me a question, and if we have time... I well, we have about a, maybe a minute. A minute. I can ask you, you, you asked me a question, uh, how heavy this responsibility is and how what I went through prepared me for what I'm doing as a president today. Number one, until you sit in that seat of leadership, you can never know what the leader goes through. Yes. And number two is to appreciate everyone that is in your team. Not only the vice president, not only the managers, but to understand everybody that makes that institution be what it is. Yes. Even in an organization like this. Yes. Somebody who cleans the bathroom. That's right. Is important. Everyone. Because if those bathrooms are not clean, the people are not going to be happy. Yeah, they're not going to be happy. <laughs> so all the people that are there and make things great, yes. they are important to the ministry you're doing. Thank and you, that sir. what helps Listen, me. thank you so very thank much you. for you. bringing this wonderful word of encouragement for your great book called Grains of Sand and your story that encourages us to just keep staying in the process Amen. Amen. because God knows the end result. Thanks Amen. again for being our guest. Thank you very much. And thank you, dear friend, for watching Babby's House. I love this great story. You have a story. Will you allow God to get glory from your story, all right? Until the next time, this is Babby's House. We love you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>